quick overview here of the differences between the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. There are lots of differences between these two, um, so we're just going over the main differences as far as the requirements to get into the House and Senate and some of the major differences between them. But you will always want to refer back to your lessons to get some more detail about this and look into lots of different specific differences between these two. First, let's talk about why there is a difference between the House and Senate. Why do we have these two parts to our U.S. Congress? So this goes back to Unit 2. Uh, if you remember, the Founding Fathers were undecided, were split when trying to decide how to structure our Congress. States with small populations feared that the larger states would dominate um, if we only looked at representation based on population. And then the large states who had a big population didn't want small states to be able to block everything they wanted to do. Um, they wouldn't want small states to have equal say and be able to block something that maybe the majority of the country's population would want, but that was being held up by smaller states in some way. So they did uh, finally reach a compromise, with the idea being let's have two chambers, which is also known as a bicameral legislature. And we're going to have a House of Representatives divided up by population and a U.S. Senate that is equal representation for each state. And you can see there were some pretty big differences here. I've got a document here. This is a primary source from the first census that we had when we counted up our population, the 1790 census. And you can see here Virginia had a population of over 747,000 people. Of course, almost 300,000 of that um, were slave populations, though, if you look into the column. Um, but that did help count towards their population at this time. Uh, but you could see where a state maybe like Rhode Island, who only had 68,000 people total, um, would be a little concerned about being dominated by states like Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, North Carolina, who have these large populations. So that's part of the reason that we had... Um, this compromise put in place. Okay, so now we know why we have two chambers. Let's look at the requirements if you want to someday run for office and be in the House or the Senate. To be in the House of Representatives, you must be at least 25 years old, and you must have been a U.S. citizen for at least seven years. You do not have to have been born here, which is a requirement for the presidency, but you just have to have been a citizen for seven years. And you must live in the state you are representing. Now remember, in the House of Representatives, you're just representing usually just part of the state. So um, you just have to live somewhere in that state. Um, I don't think you have to live exactly in the district that you are representing. In the U.S. Senate, uh, you got to be a little bit older. must be at least 30 years old. And you must have been a U.S. citizen for at least nine years. And you must reside in the state you are representing. And as a U.S. Senator, you do represent your entire state. Let's look at some other differences between these chambers. House members serve two-year terms, so they're not there very long. Um, House members represent districts, um, which for most states, that means you only are representing part of your state, not the entire state. States with very low populations like North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, uh, I think Rhode Island as well, they do only have one House member who represents the whole state just because that population is so low. But every state gets at least one representative. Overall, there are 435 members in the House, so there are a lot, and that, that gets divided up. Every 10 years, we look at how to divide that up, and we have a whole video on reapportionment if you want to go watch that on the channel as well to see how that 435 seats are divided up. So every two years, all the House seats are up for grabs. That means House members are constantly worried about re-election. This means that they are constantly worried about what the voters are thinking. Senators serve six-year terms. Senators are elected by their entire state, and they there are two senators per state. They represent the entire state. Right now we have 50 states. 50 times 2 is 100, so we have 100 senators. If we added a state, we would go up to 102 senators. So that number is not locked in. Every two years there are Senate elections, but not the entire Senate is up for re-election every two years. So the Senate's divided up roughly into about thirds. And so every two years, about a third of the Senate seats are up for re-election. 
This is to prevent the entire Senate from being turned over in one election. So no matter what, about two-thirds of the Senate will stay the same every two years. What is the purpose of this difference? So if we go back really quickly, uh, we just look at these differences here. Um, you'll point out that uh, you'll see that the House is up for grabs every two years. Every Senate, every House seat is up for re-election, whereas the Senate, they get six-year terms. So why do we have this difference? The Founding Fathers did not really trust voters that much. Um, at the time, uh, voters did not directly elect senators. Um, you didn't really directly elect the president because of the Electoral College. The people only really directly elected their House members. They wanted the House of Representatives to be very close to the people. Um, if you're up for re-election every two years, the entire House has got to really be paying attention to what their district, the voters in their districts want. Senators serve six-year terms. They don't have to worry as much about the day-to-day -day politics because they have six years before they are running for re-election again. Um, in theory, this is to allow them to be more uh, calm about decisions, look for longer-term consequences of the laws that they're passing, and the Senate has some other responsibilities as well that the House does not get as far as reviewing presidential appointments and such. So that's why we have this difference to try to have these checks and balances almost within the legislative branch. Um, so hopefully this has helped you see not only the different requirements for the House and Senate, but also some differences between how they're structured. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, let your government teacher know. And thanks for watching.